Hey there YouTube, today my daddy is going to give you a video breakdown of the Palmetto State Park. Let's check it out. Located in Gonzales County, about two miles south of Luling, Texas, is Palmetto State Park. This natural wonder mimics an almost jungle-like atmosphere where a jungle really doesn't belong giving you one of the best hiking atmospheres and truly is a gem of an underrated state park. Upon entering the park, you're greeted by Oxbow Lake, which is a four acre body of water that was originally created by floodwaters from the San Marcos River, which flows through the park. The lake is now independent of the river and is fed by a spring, so it's the same level again generally year round. This calm lake offers a fun time for kayakers and fishermen, and I saw quite a few people renting kayaks from the park staff, which apparently is available year round. This lake backs up to the primary camping and play area and makes for a beautiful view to the lakeside campers when they wake up. Back up the road to the main side tent camping area, which had about 19 sites along the lake and down this road adjacent to the San Marcos River. There are RV spots, but they're a little further inside the park and we'll take a look at those later. This is the one and only small playground located in the park, probably for aged kids two to seven or so. There were a few swings and picnic areas for anyone that wanted to also make a day trip over here. Shaded year-round with this mossy swamp look, it's prevalent throughout the entire park and makes for a really cool walk all the way down towards the San Marcos River. As mentioned, running through the park is several miles of the San Marcos River, which runs from San Marcos, Texas to about Sea Drift, which is located on the Texas coast. This river is host to the famous 262-mile race, the Texas Water Safari. Look, if you're not familiar with this race, I would go Google that, uh, it's pretty awesome. Like I said, it's 262 miles, but these people are doing this nonstop. I think the average winning time is about 30 hours, which is a crazy amount. I've always wanted to do it. Me and my friend had considered doing it at one point, but uh, I'm gonna have to take seven days off because I'm not doing that anywhere close to 30 hours, that's for sure. So up the other side of the river through that low water crossing is the refractory, which was built when the park was formed by the Civilian Conservation Corps Company, number 873 and 886, built between 1934 and 1937. The park officially opened in 1936, and this site has been serving visitors ever since. This neat old building would make for a great family gathering. My understanding also has a kitchen and can be rented for $125 a day. There's also a secluded group campsite, which can be rented as well for, I believe, about $60. So my son located a little secret river access point that's located near this building and makes for a great fun place to skip rocks and play in the water. My son was super excited as he saw a golden retriever down there who was dying to just sit in the flowing water. I bet my corgi would have a fun time. The water wasn't very deep, but as you can see, it was moving pretty good. It was a really nice little area down there. I'm not 100% sure how this area works all year round with the flowing water levels and such, but as you can see here, this tree fell over, so you can tell it floods down here, but it was definitely something you probably access most of the year. Back on the trails, there's several hikes that you would not want to miss. There's just under five total miles of trails here that really show off the diversity of flora and fauna located in the park. The main trail to check out is the Autine Swamp Trail, named aptly for the nearby community of Autine and the fact that it's literally on an elevated walk through a marshy bog. This trail has several parts near the river and main roads, and it's really level and easy for the little ones to walk on. The main swamp path, however, was unfortunately closed for my trip as the past were damaged in recent flooding. I spoke to a park employee though who said they were seeking repairs as soon as equipment could be safely moved in. As you can tell from the swampy looking environment and what you'll see in some videos in the future, it's pretty difficult, I imagine, to get heavy equipment in there. White-tailed deer are very common throughout the park as are raccoons, nine-banded armadillos, and fox squirrels. To add to that, although I'm not a bird guy, there have been over 240 species of birds seen within the park boundaries. So if you're here for birds, this is the place to be. Located at the head of another cool trail is the Civilian Conservation Corps' water tower, which was a pumping station built in 1936 to supply the nearby group picnic shelter with water. Today it pumps water without electrical power into the 1930s era cistern and water tower for release into the wetlands along the Palmetto Trail. At the head of this in Palmetto Interpretive Trail, it gives you a good idea of a variety of habitats in this crossroads of eco-regions. You can learn about the plants, animals, and cultural heritage of the area from the many interpretive panels located along the trails. 
Haven't figured it out yet, the park is named for the dwarf palm meadow, Sable Miner, which grows abundantly throughout the entire park. I think they wouldn't need to name a park after one plant, but if you can tell by the amount of them, I can see why they did. So one word of caution at this park, of course this is Texas, we have snakes, but this park is home to the canebrake or timber rattlesnake. It's more common in the eastern third of Texas, but this threatened snake does live in Palmetto and is pretty indicative of the unique ecosystem here. Another trail I went on was the Mesquite's Flats Trail, which is probably the best place to see wide open areas and mesquite trees. These plants are native to Texas and they're a hardy drought tolerant plant, but it is invasive in some places such as ranches, but they sure do make good barbecue when you smoke with it. I told Nate he had to earn his way into my video by jogging for the B-roll. Good job there, Nate. So these were pretty easy trails to go on in general. There were a couple that you had to get off the beaten path to go through and the Autine Swamp Trail is probably another one of those that is a little bit more difficult, but when they say moderately difficult, it's only because of the length, not because of the physical requirements of the trail. So Autine in this general area is home to an urban legend that you won't hear about at the park, but there is supposedly a Bigfoot-like humanoid running around named Swamp Thing. Doesn't surprise me, most small Texas places have some strange urban legends, but it'd be kind of weird to run across a uh, Bigfoot in this park, but hey, whatever, it'd be cool. Located at the end of the Mesquite's Flats Trail is the Artesian Well and the extinct Mud Boils. There are three ponds in this area, but unfortunately the Mud Boils went extinct in the 1970s. This was once a place where water heated deep within the earth, and but bubbled to the surface. It'd have been pretty cool to see in its heyday. So if you're camping here, you're probably glad that the mud boils are extinct because I imagine quite a stank would have lifted through the park to the 18 RV campsites located right behind them. The RV spots were back in and had spots for 50 amp and 30 amp sites as well as water. There were no sewage spots, however, they do have a sewage dump at the front of the campsite. I talked to quite a few people who were staying here and said they really enjoyed their stay. It was one of the best places they'd ever been as far as quietness, and just scenery, of course, is located right here off of the San Marcos River Trail, which was a really nice, easy, accessible trail, and quite a few locations for you to go down and take a swim or fish right off the San Marcos River. Now, I didn't get an opportunity to fish here, but any place that I've ever fished in the San Marcos River has been pretty successful for me. There is no need to have a fishing license in a Texas state park, so with all within these boundaries, it's fair game. Definitely hit it up. I do know that the park actually sells bait and other fishing supplies as well if you didn't bring it. I didn't mention this earlier, but I visited this particular park in February. I've visited quite a few different times throughout the year. This thing can be Mosquito City in the summer, so definitely bring a lot of mosquito spray. Obviously, it isn't a swamp. I would kind of expect that. Overall, Palmetto State Park was a very wonderful park. I highly recommend it for anyone. It doesn't have a whole lot of trails with just under five miles, but the trails are gorgeous. They definitely can be something you can do as quick as two or three hours or something you can spend a long time doing. If you're staying in the park, there's quite a bit of stuff to do as far as the rivers and the other natural beauty. The drive in and drive out is very cool. And of course, it's located right next to quite a few different things, including Historic Gonzales and Luling, Texas, which is a very interesting place. During the summer, you can come visit our Watermelon Thump Festival, which is great. Don't forget at the park entrance is of course this beautiful scenic overlook. Highly recommend you check it out for sunrises and sunsets. In closing, I want to again say that Palmetto was a great place to visit, but on the way out, you definitely want to check out Bucky's number 17. Uh, if you leave the park and take a left towards IH-10, once you get to IH-10, you're going to see this big mecca of a gas station. This is the original large Bucky's. Definitely would stop in. Get yourself a cold drink, go to the bathroom before you head on home. Thanks for watching the video. Make sure to click that button to subscribe. We'll see you guys later.